Hi guys, thanks for heading out to the channel. I hope you've been enjoying the material as much as I've been enjoying putting it together. And thank you for your support and your subscribes. If you can't go to your health care, then I'm going to bring health care to you. This channel offers you usable solutions from the ancient Chinese medical cabinet of healing remedies. And I'm going to help you figure out how to use those remedies in your everyday life. And since this channel is all about Chinese medicine, you're going to get a truckload of stuff to help you start seeing your health from a Chinese medical perspective. You're going to get theory, methods, philosophy, and a whole lot more here and on my website at bestacupuncture.com. Let's get started. I started a series on immune boost and was using moxa and I want to do a lot more episodes on using moxa to address different healthcare conditions. But then it dawned on me that you might not realize that all moxa is not created equal. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about what moxa is what it does and how it's rated so that at the end of this episode you're going to understand what moxa does you're going to understand what you're buying and you're going to understand why some moxa smells like crap let's get started first let's talk about moxa moxa is the leaves from a mugwort plant and the three most common mugwort plants are Artemis argi, Artemis principis, and Artemis vulgarius. In China, the predominant plant is going to be Artemis argi, and this is grown in southern China, and it's harvested in June. So Chinese medicine herbs have definite growth and harvest protocols. And this is because the energetics of the plant changes throughout the seasons. Let's talk to something that you might know something about, and that is the alfalfa harvest here in the United States. And in general, we have three cuttings a year. The first cutting is usually the richest and it's great for dairy cows. It's not good for horses. It's usually too rich for them and can cause them to tie up. And then you have the second and third cutting, which you usually can feed to horses because the protein, its richness, goes down with each subsequent cutting. And it will even scientifically test as a less rich field. We know this about alfalfa because we use alfalfa all the time and we treat it as a precious cash crop. So we've incorporated all sorts of research and testing around this product to ensure that it's the best quality available. China does this type of testing and research on all the herbs in their herbal pharmacy because all the herbs are a precious cash crop for China. Let's talk a little bit about how this relates to IE or moxa. This herb is considered the most yang of all the herbs in the Chinese pharmacy. And when something's yang, what it does is it is full of energy and it imparts force or movement. If you watched my previous series on Immune Boost, episode one, where we used moxa, it can help eliminate fatigue and sluggishness or that fog in your head. Let's look at how that relates to harvest because in Chinese medicine, yang is most active in summer and at its zenith at the height of summer, which is June. And in summer, you're gonna be outside, you're gonna be doing things, you're gonna be having a good time. And that is the energetics of yang. So that's the theory in Chinese medicine about why yi or moxa is a very, very young plant. It's used in clinic for just about everything and it has two main functions. First as a tonification and second as a purgative. Tonification is to strengthen and that's to strengthen any tissue or organ function so that it works more in line with how it should work. And a purgative is a physical cleansing of toxins from the body using 
any means available to the body, which could be the bowels, which could be the breath, which could be sweating. When I first started practicing, I used moxa on my chronic pain patients with excellent results. You could literally watch the tension just melt away from the muscles. And if you're wondering how that fits in with moxa's functions, well, that's part of its tonification function, its ability to strengthen the tissues to help them get back to working in the way that they're supposed to be working. I was just reading through articles the other day and I came across this article on moxa and adverse reactions. Let's look at it. So we know a couple things from this snippet. One, we know that she's doing chemotherapy and she's having adverse reactions from the chemo. And two, we know that she wants to use acupuncture to help relieve some of the negative symptoms of chemotherapy. And that is a very, very common treatment, a common use for acupuncture is to help alleviate the negative symptoms of chemotherapy. And we know that she immediately started vomiting upon the use of moxa. What's going on here? Well, it is an adverse reaction in the sense that vomiting is unpleasant, but adverse reaction has a secondary def definition of acting against one's interest or causing harm. And that's not what's going on here. If you remember that the second function of moxa is as a purgative, which is to eliminate toxins from the body in the most effective way possible. What this tells me is, yeah, she's having, she's really having adverse reactions to the chemotherapy. Stopping moxa was the right decision because you can't treat against medications. And what I mean by that is medications have such a powerful, overwhelming influence on the body that whatever you do, as long as they are on those medications, you can't get any improvement. For this, probably the best option would be to change the supportive therapy to eliminate anything that could be considered a purgative, which would encourage her to immediately eliminate the toxins in her body. You have an idea of what it does. Now let's look at how it's used. And as you saw in Immune Boost Episode 1, the sticks are the easiest to use at home. There's other methods that they use moxa in clinic, and one of them is called burning needles, where you roll the moxa into a little ball, pop it on the end of the needle, and light it up like incense. And there's another one where you do seeds. So you roll this, you roll the moxa out into these really, really tiny like seeds and you put that on the skin and burn it. And the last one that they do a lot is they again press the moxa into a cone and they put that on top of ginger or salt. And the ginger or salt is put on the body and they put the moxa on top of that and they burn it. Now, all of these except the sticks. It's really easy to burn the skin. And sometimes that's the point of the therapy is to cause a slight burning of the skin. That gives you a little idea of the different ways moxa can be used in clinic. And let's look at how you can determine moxa quality. In the US, we have wines. Wines are grown, they're rated. In China, they have teas and herbs. I didn't know that exceptional quality green tea was identified by estate and lot. The same holds true for moxa. Let's first start out with Japanese processed moxa. And all these moxas will have this beautiful white golden color to them. And the more refined, the whiter it will be, and the lower temperature that it will burn at. There's usually three levels of Japanese moxa. The first one, or the most refined, is going to be the tenkyu, and I don't speak Japanese, so 
I'm not going to be really good with the pronunciation, but this is going to be the most refined and it's going to have the lowest temperature when it burns. And they'll use this to make those little seeds and put it on the skin and burn them. The second level is Kyoto Shin and that one is less refined. It burns a little bit hotter. And so they use that to put on the needles. And the third one is the Onkyu, which ha is even less refined and has more foreign matter in it. And they use that to put on the ginger or to put on salt. And again, that one burns the hottest. I have a lot of patients who have COPD or, or who have some sort of lung problem and none of them have a problem with these moxas. I can burn them all day. We can turn that room into a burning forest and they have no problems with it. So it's really this amazing herb. But as you start stepping down in quality, it becomes a bit of a problem. So overall grades in moxa are going to be the ultra pure, which is the best. And usually the tank you is rated as an ultra pure. And then you have super pure or pure gold. And those are the same. It's a step down from ultra pure. And then after that, the grades start mixing together and they can be called a medium grade, a standard grade, a semi-direct moxa. All of these are going to be less refined, which means that the leaves are going to be less, less pure. There's going to be more foreign matter and you're not going to get that white gold color the it, it's almost like if you were painting and you took this white gold and you took blue and the more foreign matter that you put into these leaves the more blue paint you're applying to it and the moxa becomes darker and darker and the smell becomes almost rancid as it gets darker and darker. The other thing when you're buying moxa is the best moxa seems to come from Japan and the price point's gonna reflect that. I use the gold pure or the super pure a lot in clinic because it's a little less refined than the ultra pure and I do a lot of burning needles. So that's the perfect one to use on burning needles. And I buy one from Korea and the same quality out of Japan is about five times more expensive. Yet, realistically, when you get the Japan one, it really isn't the same quality because there's just this insane body and beauty to their moxa that creates so much more energy. And, you know, I have this dream of buying ultra pure Japanese moxa, but it's pretty expensive. So I haven't done that yet, but maybe one day I'll do that. So that's the grades. And when it comes to moxa sticks, all the sticks use a lower quality moxa. You can get good grade moxa sticks. And mostly what I saw in the consumer market is this medium grade or lower. And that really impacts its ability to do a good job or to do it what, what it's supposed to do. It really impacts its quality and it really impacts its smell. I'm usually looking for smokeless sticks when I'm using them in clinic. And smokeless sticks are even more difficult to purchase than just your basic moxa stick. And it's a little trial and error because the advertising on these boxes will not identify what quality they are. And those smokeless sticks that I used in the Immune Boost episode one, they, those were great. I really liked those. They had no smoke and the smoke that they did have uh, was pleasant. I just ordered some smokeless moxa sticks for the clinic. When I was looking at everything that was out there in the mass market, some of them I knew and I knew that they didn't smell good and they burn really fast. And you keep on trying different moxa sticks. If you find one that you think has a relaxing smell and good burn time, put it in the comments. I'm going to do a lot more videos on how you can use Moxa for different health conditions. And that's a wrap. So until next time, I'll catch you on the other side.